Hey, this is Notsfer, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Kleber. This is the tier 10 French destroyer, and the game itself is fantastic. Very competitive all the way through, has a great opener, mid-game, late game. It's a great tool for anyone who's looking to improve with their French or improve fighting them. Maybe a look at how they want to play the game can help as well. Now, my build is on the screen. I do take the duration extension mod for speed boost. I think that's incredibly important for the French. Speed is the way you survive. It also allows you to get around the map quickly. I also swapped out rudder shift for faster acceleration. And the spawn point that we got was a gem. We are all the way on the west side and nearest towards A. So what I intended to do is take advantage of all the acceleration and speed advantages, rush over towards A point as soon as possible, and keep my radio location sort of directed behind the island. Obviously, the left side of the screen is looking out east, the right side is looking out west. It's a good idea to consider approach, but also you need to consider your exit. If you don't know how to exit, you're probably going to die. It's just the way the game works. So as we safely reach the island, I was aware that, man, there's very few possible attack paths from this position. This giant island is blocking all the approaching enemies, and the only way I can be detected is if a DD is close enough, and I'm not giving them a choice. They have to show themselves, open fire by themselves, or move into capture and try and then attempt to smoke out. So this is a really awesome spot for the Kleber, based on how fast it can move in and out. And the enemy just didn't want to try and contest, so we got to capture it for free, and we were visible to six or seven enemy ships who were coming down from their spawn over on the southwest side of the map. As you can tell, there's a lot of enemies over here, and clearly the enemy gets close enough that we can use our main battery reload. We do pretty good damage, but he does end up using smoke and retreating. No need to stay too long, right? It's very dangerous, clearly. Lots and lots and lots of torpedoes. The opener only really works if you play correctly after the initial spawn. Like, yeah, sure, you could try and hunker down, and we get a 3300 there. You could try and hunker down, but good luck. Hunkering down is probably not going to work out in your favor, and I think the Shima is going to get out without us killing him. And unfortunately, man, we've got a Des Moines who... I don't know, maybe aggressively he felt like we had a huge advantage because we already captured the base, but clearly the enemy is pushing this way. What can we do? You're basically stuck there. You have to just do a last stand of the Mohicans. Otherwise, I mean, what can you do? Maybe he can exit out as the enemy is coming east to west. He can go west to east and keep that island in between. I was attempting to get an angle on the French DD that's also contesting A-point, but... We can't. The island's in the way. But we do see possible enemies moving up this flank. Now, if I can close off this flank and prevent the enemy battleships from moving into that one little gap between the two islands, that might give the Des Moines a chance to escape. So that's what I was thinking. And this Georgia predictably came this way, and we are going to send our torpedoes, which will rapidly get to his position. I think that he was really, really disappointed that he was spotted because he just barely missed out on getting into that position where he probably intended to punish that Des Moines because the Des Moines did make a misplay. You can't move forward into the primary flank of the enemy and expect to survive. Now, I don't think these torps are going to get there, but they, at least they screen the enemy. They slowed down his progress, so he had to consider. And... Did it ultimately work out in our favor? Well, I mean, maybe the Des Moines lived 10 seconds longer. But it's not worth us throwing our life away to try and compensate for someone's poor choice. You know, it's one thing to assist your teammate if you're not going to pay the ultimate price. But if that team player has chosen a very poor place to go, don't lose your life over it. And as we were coming out, trying to get maybe a broadside Zhao AP shot, which is definitely worth it as the Kleber, their AP's great. He's just too close to the island. Taking that shot would be 
it wouldn't probably end up getting us any damage, and it might spot us and give the enemy a clue as to what we're doing. Remember, they have yet to see me after initially taking A point. So they don't know. I could be in back at A. I could be out trying to slow down the Georgia. They, they don't really know, and I want it to stay that way. And as this is happening, we got a friendly GK who he is in trouble. He is in a very bad spot. Once again, we switch to AP, hoping to broadside the Zao, but it just doesn't work out. Instead, I'm going to send Torps at the incoming. The Bismarck is pushing rapidly. What the enemy is showing at A point is their strong flank. You need to disengage and defend. You don't want to try and go toe-to-toe -to -toe against their strong flank. They have a numbers advantage. And with all their teammates pushing forward, it's even more enhanced by that simple fact that everyone feels like they could collectively work together but we should not be spotted now something else is here and yes it's the french dd now he spots the torpedoes i believe but our torpedoes are still fast enough that the bismarck can't move out of the way i do use main battery reload on cooldown against any and every dd it is always worth it to trade this kind of damage output against them. Always, 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 always do that. If you ever get an opportunity with main battery, take it. DDs can't heal, or mostly. There's a couple that can, but DDs can't heal. They can't recover that. They have to live with that damage, and by living with that damage, it's gonna influence their decisions, positively in my team's favor. And boy, the GK, still, he is bow tanking, three, four enemy battleships, it's not going to work out very well. But our torpedoes have such a quick recharge that we're already back up. The same side that we sent previously against the Bismarck, who I would expect is going to use Hydro, but he also has to consider if he wants to dodge the torpedoes, he might overangle and make himself vulnerable. So even if the target has Hydro, German Hydro, actually the Bismarck got nerfed, do not have German Hydro, but he has Hydro. Even if he has that, make him use it. Make him actually consider it. The cooldown's fast enough that you can totally throw them out. Looks like we're going to get one torpedo hit. Yeah, one torpedo causes a flood. He actually burns down from a combination of the flood and the fire. And obviously the GK, last one to get the damage. Totally fine with me. We're just stalling this side. Our team has won the east, is contesting B. All we've got to do is slow the roll of the enemy. And this enemy Republic, he is quickly moving into range. I underestimated my momentum, but I just wanted to get in range so I could send torpedoes because they're amazing. These are like 75 plus not torpedoes. They do tons of damage. Their only weakness is the range. But if the target's in range, it's not really a weakness anymore. Now, the Republic does look like he's slowing down, and because of that, I sort of send short torpedoes, expecting that he'll sort of turn up feel a little bit. They want to deal with the GK. We also got the Kremlin. So, if we can keep these guys alive for as long as possible and let our team gather a larger advantage, it might end up working out in the end. And one thing that I really like doing in a French, and of course he fires at me, I love to be sailing away from the incoming enemy ship force, but fire on the ship that most players are focusing on. In this example, we've got the Republic. He's obviously firing, going after the Kremlin, and he does have a secondary build, which is annoying. But we get outside of his range, and we're going to engage him. Only ships that can fire on us, Montana, horrible gun velocity, terrible at engaging a French DD. Obviously, the Republic has great gun velocity, but we're still at max range for him. And he's engaged with two enemy battleships from his point of view. We're just dealing with it the right way. We are not leaving it a one versus one. We are trying to make sure it's a three versus one. I'm never going to be nice to players because we are going to lose teammates. And, you know, it's not looking too good. Based on this flank, based on what's going on, we've got a disadvantage. But we do have advantages in the ship's own power, and, we, and we've done very well. So I'm pretty confident 
that we can continue this forward as long as I continue to play the way I have played this game. Keep your distance, move in, snipe, ambush the DDs. Once all the DDs are dead, then you get free reign. Ooh, nice, Kremlin. Just shoved that right in. I think he did like 20,000 damage. The French DD that captured A dies at B. And now we've got a couple battleships. There is a Shima last spotted. I need to try and move back into range. This enemy Georgia broadside on the Kremlin. At this point, I'm considering whether to open fire on the Georgia. Unfortunately, speed boost just went down. It's on cooldown for a minute 20. And I'm not going to have a clear advantage on gun velocity. But if I don't do anything, we're probably not going to keep our teammate alive. And based on everything we've seen, he'll probably end up losing his life. But as all this has gone down, multiple enemies have gone down to friendlies, both the Kremlin and myself, and the other side of the map. We do lose the Kremlin, but we are doing good broadside damage to the Georgia, and we're keeping our distance. We really want to keep our distance, use that to our advantage. Neither one of these ships are very good at firing at a range target that's small, fast. Oh yeah, and it does a ton of damage. The Americans just aren't made for this, and you should absolutely pick on every American ship in this exact situation. It's almost laughable how slow their gun velocity is compared to the Kleber. You're always in a advantage situation against American battleships like this. Obviously, Georgia burns down. We get 123,000 damage done. Two DDs left, and there's only one battleship left on this flank. So I could easily just constantly fire on this guy on cooldown. I could do that. I could probably farm a significant amount of damage, but I wouldn't kill him. I'd probably have to drop off detection, get into torpedo range, and attempt to try and torpedo. And that's exactly what I was trying to do. I am eventually going to move myself in range, looking for a fire or two, just verify that he does have fire prevention. So we're not going to be able to just have dots on the superstructure ticking. But he does do enough lead that I'm like, whoa! Whoa, that's actually impressive. And we lose a friendly lion to the enemy Shima. That's not good. That's not good at all. Friendly Ibukis moving into range. I get the last salvo off before he drops below the island area. Uh, we don't really know exactly where these two DDs are, and that's kind of concerning. I definitely don't like that the Ibuki is taking this type of play, because the Ibuki is deliberately placing himself too close to the Montana. I don't know why he's doing this. I don't know if he feels like it's a two versus one and if uh, Natsur and his Kleber just open fires and contributes, well, we'll kill the target before he dies. I, I, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's ever going to happen. So I would highly recommend that nobody actually do a play like this. You really should use an island to block line of sight and let the Kleber spot the target for you. As he's getting so close, I mean, he's just easy prey for the Montana guns. There's one thing the Montana does very well, damage per minute is outstanding on it. And a Ibuki that's probably like 10, 12 kilometers away off of his bow, not too hard at all. But I was still trying to get in range to send torpedoes, which conveniently transitioned us right back to A. Now, some players might be frustrated by the amount of time that the enemy captures a base that you captured initially. It's completely fine. One of the things that just drives me insane is these DDs that figure out ways to kill themselves before the game actually matters. It doesn't matter if you capture a base but die five minutes in. That's useless. Literally useless. What would work better is if you would go to contest an objective, leave yourself an escape path, at, similar to that I did, place yourself in an advantageous position so that the incoming enemy ships don't have the best line of sight, force the enemy to make a choice. We force the enemy to make a hard choice. And the choice they made didn't really work out for the initial capture, but they eventually were able to get the Des Moines out of it. So from their point of view, it wasn't the worst thing ever. But from my point of view, 
I basically was able to do that for free. And who doesn't like free? Everyone likes free stuff. Free captures, free kills, you name it, you like it. So if you've thought everything through and set yourself up that you could then still retreat, it's a sound strat. It's the perfect plan. You're gonna get something if it works in your favor and you're not gonna lose anything if it doesn't. That's exactly how every decision should be made, especially at the beginning of the game. So between these two ships, Montana versus Ashima, you can guess which one I recommend 100% of the time. Go kill the DD. The DD is the one that can actually cap objectives, keep you spotted, could get a blind torpedo and kill, whereas the Montana, he's seen for miles. It'll take him forever to get over to the objective. And if he gets to the objective, we can contest. But it's so much easier if you can just take out the DD and give your team an absolute victory. And one of the best ways to guarantee absolute victory, knock out those DDs. You know, I'm preaching to a lot of you guys, but I still have to bring this up. The DD is the thing that makes everything go. Their spotting, their base objective, the blind torpedoes, they are a threat. They limit the play space for battleships as well. Now, you might be noticing that this is a trend for us as a French DD. We are once again sailing towards the radio location, keeping in mind that the island is blocking the radio location spot. I want to get point blank on this guy where he is within detection of me, use main battery, overwhelm him. And that's exactly what we end up doing. Doesn't really look like we need main battery. I actually activate it after he's dead. But we get what, exactly what we need. We got the kill. We're going to capture the base. And the Montana is left helpless because he can't have any influence over the objectives. We've literally guaranteed victory by going after the DD over anything else. And I know there are players out there that just, man, that damage. I would love 200,000. You know what I love more? Winning. And I love having three base captures and confederate and torpedo hits way above damage farming. Damage farming comes from either winning or losing. It doesn't really have an association with either side because people will usually let you farm damage if you're HE spamming. And it's very easy to do in certain ships. In other ships, it's not as easy. But one thing that definitely guarantees success is playing the objective as a DD, focusing enemy DDs down, and keeping target spotted. If you can do those three things, man, you are devastating. And in this game, I felt like every single tactical decision ended up working out really nicely. You know, we initially started going towards A, we gave ourselves an out, we didn't have to take it because we did capture, we traded very well, we kept players spotted so that we could hopefully give our teammates a chance, most of the time it didn't work out. But even giving your teammates 30, 40, 50 seconds longer could mean the difference between winning and losing. Rather than me selfishly sailing to the other side of the map or doing something for me, I was able to help my teammates live a little bit longer and for their contribution to help me in ultimately being a part of a win. So the Kleber, Confederate 153,000 damage done, two kills, Six fire set, three base captures, 2,274 base XP. It was a great game, and I really enjoyed it. I hope you did as well. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent or the most relevant uploads. You could also choose to subscribe to my channel. We do daily World of Warship videos, first impression how-to news review related. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you, have a wonderful day, and... I'll catch you next time.